Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Alberta Health Services Board Meeting. I'd like to start by reviewing the agenda. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda? David? Seconded by Hugh. Thank you very much. Declaration of conflict of interest. Does anyone have a conflict of interest to declare? Hearing none. Approval of the minutes. You've all seen the minutes. We have two different meetings, September 30 and October 17th. Could I get a motion to approve September 30 minutes? Hugh, seconded by Marlis. Thank you, all in favor. And October 17th minutes. Hugh, seconded by Marlis again, all in favor. Thank you. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name's Linda Hughes, I'm the board chair, and I want to welcome you to our October public board meeting. Today we'll approve a new agreement with the Alberta Medical Association. We're very pleased that physicians ratified the tentative agreement as the AHS board believes this deal is good for doctors and good for patients. It will help Alberta Health and AHS slow the growth of health spending. Alberta currently spends more per capita on physicians than any other province in Canada. The agreement is expected to result in about 500 million in savings by the end of 2018 while protecting services. And it will also support doctors in providing better quality services to their patients in a fiscally sustainable framework. Alberta Health Services values physicians and we're grateful for the, to the AMA for its willingness to partner with us in looking for ways to slow the rate of growth in health spending and improve health services for patients over the long term. And it's certainly good news for all Albertans. We have several other items on the agenda, including approvals for the board and quality and safety terms of reference, uh, and for restricted Alberta Health grant agreements to fund physicians on call. But before we start the rest of the meeting, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about the influenza immunization. Our public clinics are now open, and I'd like to thank all of those who have already received their uh, influenza immunization. I myself have, and several members of the board have already. It is really the best way to protect yourself and your loved ones from flu, which hospitalized more than 1,600 Albertans in a six-month period last season. In a few minutes, you'll hear more about our public uh, influenza immunization campaign from our president and CEO, Dr. Verna Yu. However, as we're already seeing flu in Alberta and know its potential impact on our health system, it's important for me to address this as well. Influenza has a significant impact on our health system every winter. This impact can be reduced by the actions of Albertans, and that includes our staff. Last season, 61% of our staff were immunized against influenza. We can do better, and we hope this season we do. By getting immunized, our staff not only reduce their own risk of getting influenza, they reduce the risk of passing it on to patients. Immunized staff can also continue to work through out outbreaks, ensuring we have the staff we need in place to take care of patients safe, safely. Safety and accountability are two of AHS's values. As healthcare workers, everyone at AHS is accountable for the safety of our patients and the wellness of our communities. We've made it clear to staff that no patient should get influenza while in our care. Immunization enables us to uphold that commitment. With immunization and information on immunization easily accessible and highly visible, we are prepared to fight influenza head on. Please join us in the battle and get the word out. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Yu to the mic to say a few words. Thank you, Linda, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us. I'm very proud to say that I've received my influenza flu shot, and I hope that all of you are going to plan to receive it yourself. There are a lot of reasons to get it. Uh, we know that it's very serious. As Linda has said, there were over 1,600 Albertans who were hospitalized last season. It causes more emergency visits than heart attacks and strokes. It puts more kids into hospitals than poisonings. And quite simply, it just greatly reduces your risks uh, of getting influenza if you receive the immunization. As for my reason to get a flu shot, I wanted to protect myself, my loved ones, and the people that I meet every day. That might seem like a generic statement, but let me tell you it isn't. 
Influenza is something that you don't want to get or shared. Just ask Jill McPhee Burton, an Alberta mother of three who celebrated her 39th birthday in the hospital. Her birthday dinner consisted of jello, and for her it tasted great because it was the first solid food she'd eaten in months. You see, Jill wasn't just celebrating a birthday. She was celebrating the fact that she actually made it to the age of 39. Last January, this otherwise healthy grade five teacher came down with influenza. Her condition greatly deteriorated, putting her first in the emergency department, then admitted to the hospital, and then into the critical care unit. She developed pneumonia, which is a very common complication of influenza, and very quickly went into respiratory failure. As her family stood by her helplessly, Jill slipped into a coma. Her care team worked hard to help her, performing six surgeries and tended to her around the clock. She woke up from that coma and found that she could only move her eyes. In the months since her final surgery, she has to relearn how to talk, move, and walk. She was nice enough to share her thoughts with us in this short video. I've never made it a priority in my life before, but now that I see um, how it nearly killed me, um, it will be a priority for my life, for me and my family for the rest of our lives. It has robbed me time for my kids and robbed my children of time with their mother. The one thing you should take away from my story is get the flu shot. In essence, she never received the flu shot. And like many Albertans, she considered herself healthy and never expected that, quote unquote, just the flu could cause serious life-altering health problems. Now she tells us that she will do anything she can do to get the message out about the importance of influenza immunizations. And so will we. Jill is currently an outpatient at the Glen Rose Rehab Hospital and is still working hard to regain her strength and balance. So we're doing this for Jill and for all Albertans. We're encouraging Albertans to get immunized for themselves and for their loved ones. The immunization program started on Monday. It is available free of charge to all Albertans six months of age and older. Local clinic dates and times are available online or by calling HealthLink. Our ads are now running, appearing in newspapers and on TV, the web and billboards around Alberta. They focus on telling Albertans the straight up truth about influenza. We took this direction directly from feedback from Albertans. After last year's season, we reached out to thousands of Albertans by phone and sat down with dozens more seeking to understand what Albertans wanted to know about influenza and what would motivate them to get immunized. Albertans told us they want us to tell them the stats that illustrate the seriousness of influenza to make it more relatable. You'll see that we've done just that. Our hope is that Albertans will respond and get immunized. Our hope is that there are no more stories like Jill's Please help us get the message out. Thank you for your time today and for your interest in AHS and in the influenza immunization program. Thank you, Verna. Uh, now we move on to our governance committee. Hugh. Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, governance committee met on October 12, 2016 and among other things considered draft terms of reference 
for the board and for the Quality and Safety Committee. The board is to approve the terms of reference in accordance with the AHS amended general bylaws. Terms of reference for other board committees, the board chair and board members were recently approved by the board and posted on the AHS public website. The governance committee recommended that the board approve the draft terms of reference for the board and the quality and safety committee. Accordingly, I move that the Alberta Health Services Board, one, approve the draft terms of reference as reviewed by the board with such non-substantive changes that management of AHS considers necessary or advisable for the board and for the quality and safety committee. And also, two, authorize and direct management of AHS to make such terms of reference available to the public through the AHS website. And I so move. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Finance Committee. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, the Finance Committee reviewed a new physician on-call grant agreement between Alberta Health and Alberta Health Services with respect to the provision of emergency on-call services. The grant agreement exceeds the approval and signing authority level of the president and CEO and therefore needs to be approved by the board. Finance Committee recommended that the board approve the grant agreement as reviewed by the committee and delegate authority to sign the agreement on behalf of AHS to the president and CEO. Accordingly, I move that the Alberta Health Services Board, one, approve the Alberta Health Physician on-call grant agreement for the term April 1, 2016, to March 31, 2017, and secondly, delegate authority to execute the grant agreement on behalf of Alberta Health Services to the President and Chief Executive Officer. <laughs> I've also been asked to speak to the AMA, AH, and AHS agreements. Representatives from Alberta Health, the Alberta Medical Association, and AHS have been meeting to reach agreement on an amendment to the current Alberta Medical Association agreement between Alberta Health and the Alberta Medical Association, which ends March 31, 2018. The AMA ratified the amendment and supporting the agreements earlier this month. As part of that, the parties have completed extensive discussions concerning priority issues, including immediate financial viability of the health care system, shared stewardship of limited health care resources, enhanced opportunities for physician participation in healthcare system de decision making and governance. The parties have created in a strategic agreement with a term until March 31, 2018, a set of initiatives that will foster collaboration between AHS, AH and AMA and leverage core capabilities within each organization. The strategic agreement provides a framework that sets out a process to resolve AHS contract negotiations with its independent contractor physicians who are providing or wish to provide insured services. Framework does not apply to employee physicians, medical students, residents, or fellows. The AHS board wishes to approve such strategic agreement and to delegate signing authority to the AHS president and CEO. The parties acknowledge that attention had to be made to integrated care throughout the healthcare system, including the integration of delivery models and the support mechanisms. Parties have agreed to work towards an integrated care delivery strategy under an AMA AH AHS integrated care agreement, which will be enforced until March 31, 2018. The board wishes to approve this agreement and delegate signing authority to the AHS president and CEO. Accordingly, I move that the Alberta Health Services Board, one, approve the AMA AH AHS strategic agreement and the AMA AH AS AHS integrated care agreement on substantially the terms and conditions reviewed by the board. And secondly, delegate authority to execute the AMA AH AHS strategic agreement and the AMA AH AHS integrated care agreement on behalf of Alberta Health Services to the President and Chief Executive Officer. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Hugh? All in favor? Thank you. No more business? Hearing none, I declare us adjourned. Thank you.